Welcome back, YouTube. This is Fast Gadgets. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a project I've been meaning to do for some time. And I also have a brief unboxing. I'm going to show you um, a product that I bought to help me do a VHS to um, computer transfer. So my plan is to take some old VHS tapes that I have uh, that have footage that I've been meaning to transfer for years and years. So the product that I bought, which was some time ago, is the uh, USB 2.0 video capture. I think, wow, uh, it's probably been two years since I bought this, but this unit says that it does full screen for previewing video programs. Uh, transfers the video to an iPod or iPod Touch if you want, uh, Apple TV, Xbox, mobile phone, pretty much anything, hoping to a computer as well. Supports HD video file input, although that's not what we have here. We're going to have VHS, which is 320 by 240. Uh, supports almost, oh, pigeon English here. Support almost format audio and image file input. Upload video to YouTube. What a plus. And down the bottom it says MPEG-2, DVD, easy cap. On the back, it's got an image um, showing the device hooked into USB, and it does show a laptop or a PC. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. And then it shows the standard uh, connections here coming from a TV or a camera, DVD, uh, VHS, and a couple other different things. So let's go ahead and open it up. I actually never opened this. I bought it and just never opened it. I never had a chance. So, But now's the time. It needs to be done. So what I have is the actual device itself. Pretty straightforward. Not sure what the button is for yet, but we'll figure it out. Um, it has a VHS plug-in, a uh, VHS USB 2.0 plug on one end. The actual device itself. Let's see if I can get some more light here. Um, a small button there, and then looks like we have an SVHS input. So if I had a um, SVHS device, I could use that, um, stereo in and out, and a video clip, video plug, all our RCA. Comes with a disc. I'm hoping this is just a driver. There may be some software there. One of my concerns is that um, this may not work with Windows 10 because I bought this two years ago, so it's always possible I may have some problems with it. Uh, I do have a Pentium 4 that's running Windows XP, so if I have to, I can use that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this hooked up, and then we'll install the software. All right, so here's the device. I've hooked it up to my USB 2.0 ports even though I do have the USB 3 card in my computer here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. Get logged into the system that I'm going to use for the capture, which is my AMD Phenom 2 X6 running at 2.8 gigahertz, but I do have it overclocked to, I think it's like 2.9. It's not major overclocked, just a little bit to give it a little extra edge, but for the type of capturing that I'm going to be doing, I'm not too worried about it. So, I am curious if it even sees the device. So let's find out. Yes, it does see it currently does not have a driver installed by the looks of it. Drivers for this device are not installed. Just for kicks and giggles. 
I'm going to go ahead and do a search. Nope, couldn't find a driver. Uh, it's interesting that a couple videos ago I did a Windows 98 install, and that whole process I just went through to look for a driver and install it is still, for the most part, exactly the same in Windows 10. Curious, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to put the disk in. If you recall, ah, uh, you can't see it. I've got the video easy capture CD. I do have a bad feeling that I may not be able to find a driver for this thing. We'll see. I can always go down to XP if I need to, right? I do apologize for the noise. I don't know if you can hear my air conditioner in the back. It's pretty, pretty hot here right now. Whoops. All right. Well, let's try Auto Run and see what happens. I just wonder how old this driver is. And if I'm asking for trouble. So I think I paid something like 15 bucks, maybe $10 for this device. Um, you know, so you kind of caveat emptor there because you really don't know what kind of support you're going to get with this type of device. But the thing is, I didn't really need a fancy um, capture device. I just needed something to get the video. Not sure what Showbiz is, but let's find out. Lots of waiting. Guess I can close that. So I'm not sure what happened. I asked it to install the Showbiz program. Install Showbiz, please. Yes. Hmm, I guess second time's the charm. Or not. I mean, is it possible that the software got installed and it simply didn't ask me anything? I mean, what's the chances of that? Ah, here we go. License key, huh? Oh boy, give me a second. All right, well, I did find the license code. It was on the uh, disk itself, but uh, it was a very, very long convoluted license code. So this software is by ArcSoft. Um, I can't really remember if I've ever used any ArcSoft software before. If any of you have, uh, leave a comment and let me know not really familiar with it you would think with an SSD and a modern computer this software would not take this long to install okay I'm gonna go ahead and finish the installation and humorously enough I'm going to have to do a restart alright so a quick reboot did seem to make uh, the difference as far as that driver goes. So now I'm seeing the EasyCap Video Grabber. Um, and it does seem to be there. So we're going to find out if this thing actually works now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook up um, 
the VCR, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got a uh, Emerson forehead stereo VCR here, and I have a tape of some student films I did when I was extremely young with um, a good friend of mine and co-producer. So I'll use this tape um, as capture material since I want to capture it anyway. It's one of the many that I will be capturing. All right, well, I put the tape in the VCR and it took quite a bit of fiddling to get it to operate. Uh, seems to be working fine, so I'm going to try a capture here. I've started the ArcSoft Showbiz software, and I can even go full screen, although, I don't know, don't see why I need to. But my thinking was, instead of capturing individual videos, I would just capture the entire length and then chop it up as needed, um, which for me would be faster, I think. Uh, looks like it only saves as MPEG-2, uh, but I can change the location because I have a 4 terabyte drive in this system, so I have much more storage on the D drive. The C drive is just small uh, SSD. No, I don't want to put it in there. Uh, we'll put it in here. All right, so I'm going to start the capture, and I'm going to press play. Let's see what we get. I haven't quite figured out why it's blinking like that. I'm hoping it's not going to be an issue. Okay, so here's one of my student films. I think what I might do is go ahead and stop the capture. I honestly don't care if the blinking is on the monitor, but if it's actually doing that, in the captured image that would be a problem so I guess it's a little editor as well but I really don't care about editing I just want to see I want to see the footage and make sure that it successfully captured correctly okay so here's the MPEG um, I'm going to open it with VLC media player so unfortunately that blinking is part of the capture, so I'm going to have to figure out why it's doing that. That could be a bit of an issue. It should not be blanking like that during capture. One of the things I could do is plug it into my USB 3.0 port and see what it does, so I think I'm going to do that for starters. Be right back. Alright, well after a reboot, um, I now see the EasyCap video grabber and I am on my USB 3.0 port. So I'm going to go ahead and press play on the video. And see what we get. Well, I'm not too impressed. All right, let's try a capture. What's the worst that can happen? All right, it still remembers to use my uh, hard drive, my four terabyte hard drive. I'm not sure why it's stopping like that. I find that a little bit odd. Was that freezing actually in the capture or is it just something on screen if it's just on screen I don't care all right I'm gonna let VLC open this
Yep, so the freeze is in the capture. Press one. A natural disaster? Press two. Take off girlfriend. Press three. I just wanted to tell you that you were the slimiest rat thing I have ever had the intense displeasure of. Anybody remember the old answering okay. machines? See you again. I'm giving you a ring. All right, so either I've got to look for some settings to tweak or I'm going to have to get a newer driver for this device. So I'm going to look around and see if I can get lucky and find a newer driver. All right, well, I managed to freeze the capture device, so I think I'm going to rewind the tape and I'm going to get the Pentium 4 system with uh, Windows XP set up and we're going to try it on that system and see if we have any better luck. Whoever thought it would be beneficial to have a Windows XP machine in this day and age? Well, <clears throat> hopefully uh, this one's going to work better than my AMD machine. Uh, certainly not as fast, certainly not as much RAM, but um, I really think it's got enough to do the job. I just hope it doesn't have a stuttering and freezing problem. I do have 4 gigabytes of RAM for this Pentium 4 and a 120 gigabyte SATA drive that's 7200 RPM that'll greatly improve performance overall on this system. And I plan on doing that at some point. Let's see if it found the capture device. And it did. Um, I think I'll just leave the device settings as they are, but I am going to change the hard drive. This system has a second drive where my Windows 98 installation is. So I think I will go ahead. It doesn't look like I can create a new folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it right in the root of the E drive. And I will start the VHS tape. I'm going to hit capture, thinking optimistically here, definitely getting audio. I'm not seeing any skipping or freezing of any sort. So I guess it was a problem with Windows 10 is what I'm thinking, which is understandable because this software is actually quite old. Uh, but it looks like I can do some basic editing uh, with this ArcSoft Showbiz. I've never used it before. Um, I think it, probably what I will do is take the videos and just move them over to iMovie. Seems to be the easier way to deal with it. Uh, but this is pretty exciting. I'm going to be able to capture all of my old VHS tapes. Um, a $20 capture device and my $19 old computer came in handy again. So that's pretty exciting. I'm definitely going to do those upgrades to the um, Pentium 4 2.8 gigahertz that I have here. I'm going to put that 4 gig of RAM in and the 120 gigabyte 7200 RPM uh, SATA drive and that should make a big difference. So definitely excited. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, would like to see you again in the next episode. If you have any comments, leave them below. And please subscribe if you've enjoyed this video to see more content. Thank you very much.